We are going to be going over the second game. This was played between Lewis Paulson and Paul Morphy in the American Chess Congress, 1857. Uh, this was considered to be the World Chess Championship, or not World Chess Championship, sorry. This was considered to be the uh, essentially the United States Chess Championship featuring the best players in America at the time. Lewis Paulson was a very established uh, American player, probably the strongest player in the U.S. at that time. And Paul Morphy was a rising, up-and-coming rising superstar. So... Um, e4 is played here. Paulson did actually beat Morphe, by the way. To be clear, uh, to be clear, Paulson did beat Morphe in a competitive game. So e4 was played. E5, as I was saying, this is um, probably from around, I would say, the uh, the mid-1560s, roughly around the time that uh, Rui Lopez de Seguera, the Spanish priest, came up with the Rui Lopez opening. Um, it was widely considered that you always had to meet the pawn push in the center with e4 with e5. So probably up until I would say maybe the early 1900s even maybe even later than that um e4 e5 was widely considered to be the best standard setup uh so from about 1560 to about 1900 almost everyone played e4 e5 so for a very very long time this was uh what was considered knight f3 knight c6 knight to c3 was played here um by lewis paulson paul morphy plays knight f6 they, they mirror it up this is the four knights defense Bishop to b5 is played. Here, Morphe plays bishop c5. Again, you guys, this is the great thing about some of these openings is that this bishop b5, bishop c5, this is still a modern approach to the game. Um, and I think it's playable for black. Objectively, I think after 95 castles, it gets very, very sharp. Um, it's not clear cut what's going on here, but it's still something that can, that can be played. So here, Paulson castles, Morphe castles, and then 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 Paulson plays knight takes e5. And here Morphe plays Rook E8, and this is again what I would say, which is really amazing about these games that you look at, is when you consider how long ago these games were played, and how the players did not have any sort of technology, it was purely based on what they read in, in, in paperback books, or um, or what they made, the moves that they studied on um, on, on like an actual chessboard, it's incredible they came up with these, these ideas. Like Rook E8 is an amazing move, Knight, Knight takes C6, D takes C6, very important by the way, because temporarily you've sacrificed a juicer. Now, in this position you can play Knight takes Knight, but after D4, White sort of gets a very big center here, and your Knight on E5 and your Bishop on C5 are under attack, you can maybe go Bishop D6, but after F4, Knight G6, E5, it gets very, very sharp, um, and White gets a lot of pawns and a lot of play in the center of the board here. So, here Morphe played Rook to E8. Knight takes c6, he takes with the pawn, not b takes, by the way, because even though this is quite reasonable, white can probably just play d4 here and um, and develop the bishop from c1 to g5. So instead he plays d takes c6, bishop to c4 is played here by um, Paulson. Now this is one of the cases where Morphe actually plays a move that is surprisingly not thematic. He plays pawn to b5 here. Now in this position, the best move is to play knight g4, and the reasoning behind it is that white cannot close the diagonal. White would love to go something like d4 and bishop e3 and close this diagonal. But in this case, you can't play d4 because if you go d4, black just takes the pawn. And in the meantime, you're threatening to put a lot of pressure with this knight on f2 and h2. You can play queen h4, um, and your bishop and your knight and your queen, all three of these pieces are going to be really, really dangerous here and attacking the white king. So instead, um, Morphe plays b5, Paulson goes bishop to e2, Morphe plays knight takes pawn, and again, it's still a reasonable position here, but it's not great, because after bishop f3, rook e6, um, white is actually significantly better here if he plays either d3 or a4, I believe. Um, now, one thing that's amazing is when you look at this game, in this position after rook takes e4, if I, I, I have a feeling that if you had most people who are like 2,500 here, they would probably almost instantly play pawn to c3 and d4 to uh, to build the big center here. Now, this is, not, this is not to be critical of the players at the time, but the reason I say that is because what it shows is that we just learned so much about how you develop in the center of the board and um, how you develop your bishops, especially in positions like this where you're trying to build a connect three. Um, so I think in, in a blitz game, probably like a large percentage of players would actually play C3, D4 almost immediately here. Um, that's because the game has moved so much. The game has been built upon the past results um, and the past games between the top players of the time. Because in the game after Bishop F3, Rook E6, Paulson tries C3 now. He tries to build the center with the Connect 3. Um, and now Morphe punishes him very seriously with Queen to D3. And now the Bishop is kind of glued to C1 and you can't really develop it. 
Now you might be wondering what is the difference between this and the previous position. The difference is that in this position, if you go c3, black cannot um, black cannot play queen d3. Your bishop covers the square, so you're going to be able to push this pawn and activate your dark square bishop with your next turn. So it's a very serious error, and this is also, I think, one of the things that makes chess so fascinating and so beautiful is that you think, okay, normal logical move, attack the rook, put the bishop on a good diagonal. But because you play this imprecise order after queen to d3, your whole advantage is gone. So there's one slight mistake by um, by Paulson, essentially cost him the game, uh, all because just there's one slight mistake, one slight wrong order, and you can't take it back and do over, and um, and that costs him the game. So here. Uh, b4 is played by Lewis Paulson. Morphe goes bishop b6. Interesting move, by the way. I'm not sure if it's the best move. Uh, bishop d6 is also quite reasonable, but bishop b6 makes a lot of sense um, to uh, attack on the diagonal. a4 is played by Paulson. And uh, Morphe takes. Of course, you don't want to say... You'd love to finish your development. Bring the bishop in, bring the rook in, something like this in rook e8, um, and take the file. But if, if you do this after pawn to a5, your bishop actually gets trapped here um, on b6. Was there no take back at that time? I honestly don't know. Um, I honestly don't know. I have no idea. I have no idea, but I don't think you were allowed to make take backs even at that time of the game. Um, so... So yeah, but bishop d7 is, is a bad move, so after a5, your bishop is trapped. If you go here, I eat your bishop. 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 So um, your bishop basically is trapped on the diagonal. You have no squares that you can go to um, without losing it. And at best, you're going to get one pawn in return for it. Um, so therefore, Paul Morphy plays pawn, takes pawn, eliminates the threat, and after queen a4, he continues with his idea by playing bishop to d7. And you'll see here, white's bishop is still very bad. Even if you move the bishop here, there's a pawn in front of it. It has no scope. If you move the bishop here, there's a pawn in front of it. It has no scope. Um, and so the bishop really needs to be on this diagonal, but you can't get it there because the queen prevents this pawn from ever pushing and creating oxygen. Um... So after bishop d7, yeah, I did I did a lesson on this match with Pokimane, but I didn't really go over the fine finer points of it. Uh, but the reason I'm doing it again is because I consider this to be one of the best Morphe games. Uh, snipers need scopes. Yeah, it's like, okay, can I have my sniper but without a scope? And then what am I doing? Um, so bishops generally, you want to have bishops on diagonals where they have a lot of lot of targets further down the diagonal. And um, so yeah. Rook a2 is what Paulson plays again, trying to bring the bishop in the game. Now, one thing that's amazing about this this move is that it's it's a bad move, but it has an, a concept of playing queen to c2. Let's just say I play h6, queen c2, and now I'm going to trade the queen. So if queen c2, rook c2, I'm going to push the pawn and activate my bishop again next move. Um, so even though it's a bad move, it's a very high class kind of idea to play rook a2 and queen c2 to force this queen away and then then move the pawn and develop your bishop. So here, Morphe plays rook to e8. Paulson goes queen to a6. Now, again, probably if he wanted to go queen a6, he should have just gone queen a6 right away here. Um, but he does it this order. And I suspect the reasoning is because Paulson wanted to play queen c2. But then during the game, he realized after queen takes rook, king takes rook e1. It's checkmate. The, uh, the, the, the rook bros, they're connected. They're, they're attacking the king. And the king cannot get out of the check here. So it's a checkmate. So that's why... Um, Queen a6, yeah, the, the bro stack, exactly, the bro stack. Um, rook bros for life, exactly. Yeah, like queen c2, you take and, yeah, you take, <laughs> you go rook e1. <laughs> oh, dear, okay. Uh, okay. <laughs> All right. Um, okay. So, yeah, so, okay, so queen c2 is not a move here. Now, I suspect that's why um, in this position, Paulson played queen to a6. So now... Morphe plays queen takes bishop. Amazing move, by the way. And um, after pawn takes rook, rook to g6 was played here by Morphe. King to h1. And now bishop to h3. And the reason this is so strong is because now if you go rook to g1, I can just take. Wait one second. Do I have sound on or not? Anyway. And after king g1, there's rook to e1. Um, and this is a force checkmate. The bishop holds the two squares. Um, the king cannot come forward, and after queen to f1, you just take. And so this is really, really, um, 
Really, really nice idea here by Morphe to play bishop to h3. And, and here, Paulson plays rook d1. Now, apparently, because computers are so strong, they show that white can somehow play queen to d3 here. And the reason this is not so easy is because after bishop g2, king g1, if you take the pawn, white can sack the queen for the rook. And um, white can now play like d4. And white's, in fact, winning here because you have two bishops and a rook, but white has two rooks and a bishop. Um, so because you sacrifice a queen for one bishop, apparently queen d3 is a move. Although after queen d3, maybe you can even go bishop f2 or f5. Actually, even f5 maybe is just winning. Yeah, f5 is just winning here, apparently. But again, um, very, very good intuition by Morphe to play this way because you have no idea that it's a forced checkmate, but sometimes you have to trust that there is a forced way to make the checkmate. And, um, and so here... Uh, Lewis Paulson plays rook to d1. He figures, well, if black checks, I come over. If you check back on h3, I can't run to f1, but I just stay in the corner, and you have nothing better than a repetition. Um, so after king to g1, bishop takes f3. You figure, okay, I go king f1. My king is safe, because when you take the rook, I'll push my pawn. Your bishop actually, by the way, is very bad here. When you when you look at this conceptually, the bishop is, uh, bishop is looking at, at, at a dead diagonal. The pawn just blunt the bishop. You have no scope for it. Um, so you think you're okay however here uh morphe plays bishop g2 apparently rook g2 is, is is really really clean here um because after white pushes the pawn to guard you can just take and you create the uh classic triangle checkmate here with the bishop holding g2 and e2 and the rook on h1 checkmate the king on f1 that being said um it's a very hard move to play and honestly after rook g2 it's very easy to be afraid of like queen d3 rook f2 king g1 and be like I don't know where my rook is going because if i try to fossil this way then i lose the bishop or wait no sorry then then he blocks or wait no actually no sorry this is just winning never mind um yeah so maybe rook g2 is easier but again it's not um it's not it's not necessarily <laughs> it's so practical okay thank you for the papega appreciate that um but anyway morphe goes bishop g2 king to g1 bishop h3 king to h1 and now bishop takes f2 and the idea here is basically just to create checkmate on g2 next move because your bishop holds the square if white goes rook g1 you just take the rook and it's mate of course um if white goes queen takes c6 you just take the queen um so the only way for white to try and hold the game is to play queen f1 and now after bishop takes queen rook takes rook to e2 again white still cannot push the pawn to develop the bishop because then you would lose your rook on a2 here so after rook a1 uh, Morphe went rook h6, d4, and now plays a beautiful move, bishop to e3. So white finally gets his pawn push and can bring the bishop into the game, but it's a little bit too little, too late, because after bishop takes bishop, rook takes pawn, king g1, um, the bro stack, the lateral bro stack leads to a forced checkmate here because the rook holds this rook and the rook holds h1, and the king has no squares to go to. So therefore, after um, this move, bishop to e3, uh paulson resigns because there's no way really to stop this threat of a checkmate here technically you could sack a rook but again after rook takes and rook h2 it's winning and if you try to push the pawn i just take and it's checkmate king cannot come up um and it can't go over either because the bishop on e3 holds g1 so it's a forced checkmate here so that's why after bishop to e3 um in this position uh paulson resigned the game and it's a really really beautiful checkmate um very very nice game by morphe you could argue there are certain moves that are not played perfectly but in general the, the quality of the moves that he found the attacking ideas developing the pieces sacking the queen on f3 very very thematic and um it shows why he was the first unofficial world champion at the game of chess